The Baldwin County Public School System, considered one of the finest educational environments in the entire state of Alabama, has a history beginning in the latter part of the 18th century, when his records indicate Alabama's first public schoolhouse was built in the North Baldwin County community of Tinsaw in 1799. And at that time, nearly 10 years prior to Baldwin being organized as a county, the area remained geographically expanse. Agriculture served as king, and family farms dotted every section of the county. And in this era of extremely limited highway systems, individual communities built their own respective public schoolhouses with the Board of Education supplying teachers to provide instruction. In the early part of the 20th century, the Baldwin County public school system boasted over 80 separate school districts, each with their own individual public schoolhouse. And as time progressed, marked with improvements in transportation and engineering, numerous school districts were consolidated into nearby areas, leaving us today with very few of the original and historic public schoolhouses which distinguished Baldwin County beginning in 1799 as the birthplace of Alabama's first public schoolhouse. This documentary, commissioned by the Honorable County Commissioners of Baldwin County and Honorable Members of the Baldwin County Board of Education, seeks to illuminate these few remaining and historic original public schoolhouses in an effort to pay tribute to one of the finest public school systems in Alabama. Located on South Church Street in the city of Fairhope, this historic edifice of the old Fairhope High School has a rich history beginning in the first quarter of the 20th century, and today the building serves as the Fairhope K-1 Center. This original building was constructed in 1925 and was the educational home to students in grades 10 through 12 its first year. The prominent landmark incurred many additions due to a growth in student enrollment between 1927 and 1949 leading up to the construction of the North Section Street campus in the mid-20th century. It was during this time period, toward the conclusion of the 20th century, that this cherished old historic high school campus became known as the Fairhope K-1 Center for Fairhope's young citizens. Serving as the only high school on the Baldwin County Eastern Shore for 64 years prior to 1989, the old Fairhope High School today remains an important historic and architectural asset within the city of Fairhope and distinguishes the history of educational enlightenment on the Baldwin County Eastern Shore. The classic school construction of this beautiful Church Street campus still serves students of the Fairhope community, which paved the earliest years of high school education in Fairhope. Back in the earliest days of the founding of Fairhope, 1895, when the founders of the Fairhope Single Tax Colony first arrived on the Eastern Shore, the Utopian Society Dreamers had among their highest ambitions to create a society uh, that was perfect. Among those dreams for the children was an education that would make them thinkers and believers in the future. Sure enough, the first school was begun in just a few months after the colony was founded. Mr. C.L. Mershon, who was visiting here for the summer, um, actually started a school. Now, it was ex a great example of a real public education because there was some subscription funds paid by the parents for the kids, but uh, uh, there were also public funds involved. Well, Mr. Mershon decided to go back up north to continue his um, medical education. There was a period of time in which um, a Miss Woods and a Miss Hall were teachers on an often owned basis with some of the funds being public funds. By 1899, there was enough public fund to indeed have the first true consistent public school in Fairhope. And the teacher for that was Mrs. C.L. Mershon. Mr. Mersh Dr. Mershon had completed his medical studies and returned here as physician, and his wife became the teacher of the school. Now, the town just experienced phenomenal growth. And in 1904 and in 1909, buildings were first built on Church Street. And one of those buildings is the one that stands out in the memory of most people of Old Fairhope. It's a two-story masonry white building, and it served this community just so well until it had to be demolished in 19, um, 
about in the 1950s. That school, two-story school, which was located where Fairhope Park is today, uh, was actually just overflowing with students by 1925. So the community and the system began building the Fairhope High School just across the street. And the school was completed in 1926 and 1927 in phases and is still in existence today here in Fairhope. That school served students for one through 12. So it, would be, it was called Fairhope High School and actually served students all along the Eastern Shore um, as the high school. When the new high school was built uh, in the 1950s, the school became a grades one through eight and one through nine at times. And then um, with the middle school was built, then it served students one through six. And the red brick school that was begun in 1925 and served students for many, many years is still existing. It's standing right in downtown Fairhope on Church Street. And today is the kindergarten first grade center for students in Fairhope, Alabama. Fairhope uh, High School to teach uh, math in uh, January 1950. I was uh, hired to teach 8th and 9th grade math and Algebra 1. And uh, I did that in this building here uh, until uh, the spring of 1953 when we uh, moved up to where the the high school on uh, North 2nd Street is now. That was the last year that high school students went to this school. At that time, uh, the high school students came from, uh, from Spanish Fort, Daphne, and down to Fish River. And of course, uh, that was before the uh, schools were integrated. and. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jim Bennett was the uh, principal at the time that I came here, and uh, the, uh, the school, of course, has changed a whole lot. Across the street where the uh, park is over there was the playground, but it was uh, not uh, fixed up as nice as it is now because it was just plain old dirt. And they also uh, practiced football over there. And uh, that was uh, where the, the uh, old Cummings Hall is where the basketball team played. And uh, right next to uh, where we are right now, where the uh, office is now, there was a house there that uh, Mr. Bennett, the principal, lived in. And uh, then on the other side of that house was the, uh, the Fairhope Christian Church. And, the, and that's the reason this street in front of the school here is called Church Street is because the, the Christian Church was on the corner up there. Um, I, uh, there's not many of the teachers that taught at the time that I came here are still around. Mr. Molini is one, and uh, who I think you're going to interview at a later date. And uh, Wanda Beasley taught here. And there's a few others still live in town, but they're not physically able to get here. Uh, the, uh, the school, we, uh, it, when we went through the halls, the narrow halls that we had here, we had to have hall monitors to make sure that the everybody kept single file on, to the right at all times. And uh, they couldn't uh, walk side by side. They had to be single file going to whichever direction they were going. Stay on the right. And uh, the uh, library, in, uh, in the building now is the same place that the library was when I came here in 1950. And I was surprised to see that. I thought probably it had been changed into some other uh, 
some other room. Back at, the, at that time, right across the street over here, was the smoking area. And the students who smoked could go across the street and smoke. And uh, where all those cars are parked right now, that, that was uh, just plain old dirt over there, no grass, anything. And the man who at that time owned that house, to keep the kids from leaning up against his fence, he would pour old oil on the, on the fence to keep them from leaning up against that fence while they were out there at the smoke break. I remember in that eighth grade math class that I had, I had uh, three girls in there that were the best students in that class. And uh, they, they always stood out and they were all three good students from the eighth grade on through high school. And, uh, and all three of them were real good math students. And a lot of people nowadays are worried about girls being able to take math and be good students. They were good ones back then. And uh, that uh, girls have always been able to be good math students and nobody's held them back. <laughs> when I taught here, the uh, cafeteria for the school was in the basement under the auditorium. And uh, the cafeteria that's on this campus now was not here at that time. But uh, the, uh, you, you, we had, uh, during the lunch period, a lot of the students would be in the auditorium and uh, they could uh, sometimes dance. We had a jukebox in there and they could dance and uh, you could hear them stomping around and we would be underneath in the cafeteria trying to eat and uh, that was uh, and what always struck me is that when I went out to the new high school out on uh, Greeno Road and went in that cafeteria compared it to the cafeteria that was here when I came to Fairhope there's such a stark difference you can't believe it <laughs> so much difference across the street from this uh, from the school here right now was on the corner across the street was a uh, was the original Fairhope Public School. And I don't remember when it was built, but it probably back in the 20s sometime. But at the time I came here, it was used for the home ec building and the ag building. The first floor was the ag building, the second floor was a home economics building. And uh, that building was torn down a good number of years ago. I don't really remember when, but uh, it's, what I do remember though that was different, seemed like it was different then than it is now, is that practically all girls to took home economics. And uh, a lot of boys, of course, took ag classes because Baldwin County was a farming community. And uh, of course, it's changed a whole lot over the years. And uh, but uh, my wife w always uh, went to this school and uh, graduated here in 1948. And she uh, has fond remembrances of her home economics teacher. Taught her how to sew, which she still does. And. Uh, when uh, my children, my daughter was in school, uh, she s would sew practically all the clothes that she wore. And uh, she learned all of that at Harold High School Home Economics Department across the street. In trying to remember back the history of Fairhope and, and, and the school here, I started in the first grade. I was one of those rare people, I think, that were born here in Fairhope. I went through um, first through the 12th grade. Surprisingly enough, I think the first grade I was in this building that we're in now, which is the K-1 Center. Um, but even back then, we had some overcrowding and, and outgrowing our building because in the second grade, they had, we had to use the uh, Methodist Church for the second grade. And, um, I guess in the third grade we solved that problem and, and, and came back over here. So for temporarily we had to go all the way across 
uh, two or three blocks around, you know. But uh, then we went probably, until we got into high school, we didn't really change buildings. We were all inside this building because the old building, the original building that we have, which is across the street, was uh, used for home economics and the agricultural building. And we called it the ag building. But that was, you know, then, then we got to leave the building and, and, and go, you know, into, uh, leave, the, leave this campus. But uh, we were probably very lax, you know, it's a re relaxed attitude. The, the, the teachers watched us, but they, we, they, they didn't police us, which left us a lot of room to, <laughs> you know, misbehave if we wanted to. Some, some of the, one of the fondest memories I remember that, of being things that you did that weren't part of school was when, when we were in the second grade in the Methodist Church building, Miss, she was, Bermel Wright was her, she was Miss Andrews at that time, was engaged to a young man who worked uptown in Fairhope. And apparently I was either her favorite or maybe one of those responsible kids, but I was allowed to um, take notes from Miss Wright to her boyfriend uptown. And she would write her notes and she would send me up, up to the store where he worked to deliver her notes. Now, being in the second grade, I probably wasn't ready to read cursive writing, so I really didn't ever read any of them. So it's <laughs> but I spent half the year going back and forth every day delivering notes. And bless her heart, if <laughs> she hear me now. But um, it, to, to me, it was, it was very interesting. You know, my mother didn't seem to think anything about it. She felt like that was, <laughs> that was, I was safe enough, so. But um, probably, uh, and, and another occurrence that happened, as someone said earlier, uh, we weren't really policed. If we had, our free time was you came to study hall or you could come to the library, but it was, it was easy to get permission to go uptown or to leave, uh, you know, to, to, to go up and get an ice cream or, or whatever. But it was also easy to leave the campus and play hooky. And, I'm one of these unfortunate people that everything I've ever done anything wrong in my life, I got caught. So we, again, probably some of these same girls that signed the petition, <clears throat> because this was in high school, we were driving. Um, we decided that tomorrow we would play hooky. And we came in, we came to school, we checked in, answered roll call, we went through you know, morning things, well then we immediately left. So we never got to our first period class. And where did we go? We went to Robertsdale to the high school because someone in the group had a boyfriend that went to Robertsdale High School. So here we were, and during a school to hour, on another school campus. Well, of course, what did they do, you know? They called back and we reported. And so the next morning, first thing when we come into school, we're called into the principal's office and Mr. Bennett would like to just ask us very kindly, where were we? <laughs> yesterday. Well, there were no, you know, there, were, there was no fibbing, no, no tying. It was like we were caught red-handed. But surprisingly enough, really, I mean, there was, there was no expulsion. There, there, was, it, there was just a lecture. It, it, I think they understood that it was, we're kids and, and this is going to happen. And so, uh, but um, we probably got more severely punished by our parents when they found out than we did at, at school. So, but, um, you know, things, things have truly changed. The, the, the building is the same. We've had uh, our, our reunions when, I'm, I'm with that group of the, that the class stays together, has, has stayed together over the years, those of, that are, those of us that are still here. <coughs> But um, just recalling when there were wood floors in, you know, in, in the building and, and things that uh, um, what I mean the changes that, that have been made. I walked in here today and I couldn't find the office because the office wasn't here. It was moved, had been moved. 
so we were in this building, went all the way through from the, the 12th grade, graduated from this building. It was held here on the stage. And um, that particular year, there we had a, a, a young man who had not been teaching in the Fairhope High School very long, and I really forget what his name was, but he was a single man, very, very, very proper, prim young man, and he had a new suit for graduation, and all the teachers, all the high school teachers were on stage during the, 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 the ceremony, and this young man was sitting at the edge of the, of the stage where you could see the side of his, his body, and the tag that he had purchased the suit was still on the, on the coat of his tag. And it was, I mean, all the titters that, that, that went through, and it was so embarrassing. I mean, I was even embarrassed for, you know, for him as, as, a, as a high school graduate to think, you know, he, he never knew it, and I don't think anybody ever told him. But <laughs> no, all, everything was held that we had was in, it was in this auditory. I mean, we had our, we had senior plays, uh, you know, they, they had, um, oh, that was, that, that was uh, an, an event, I mean, to, to be, you know, to have, to have your, 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 be a senior and be able to participate in the play. Not a drama club per se, but it was just an, one of the traditions that there was a play that, you know, and Mrs. Bennett, who was the principal's wife, uh, always directed, you know, she was our director. I began my formal education right here at Fairhope High School. At that time, it was first grade through 12th grade. The year that I started school was in 1935. At that time, the elementary school was across the street in the old block school building. It was a square building. Uh, it, broke my heart when they had to tear it down at a later time to build this beautiful park across the street. At that time, the Christian church was on the corner of the school property, right adjacent to the school property, and I had first grade in that fellowship hall of that church. Eunice Harrison Ness was my first grade teacher. After that grade, I moved across the street to the, the big block elementary school, and my second grade teacher there was Vermel Andrus Wright. My third grade teacher there was uh, Uh, Adelaide McDade from Daff, from the Battles War. My fourth grade teacher was Serena Beatty. My fifth grade teacher was again Adelaide McDade. The sixth grade teacher was Adele Dean. When I was in fourth grade, my family was talked into moving to Los Angeles, California. And I was in Ms. Beatty's class at that year, and I really was unhappy to leave her and my friends. We stayed in Los Angeles three months, very disenchanted, and moved back to Fairhope. During that period of time that I was in California, the new wing on the school was built for the elementary school, and my fourth grade class moved over here, and I missed that exciting event. Also during that time in Fairhope, we had that terrible freeze. It snowed profusely. Uh, the bay froze over out to the pier, and when I got back with all my wonderful travel experiences, I found I'd missed the greatest thing of all, the freeze in the snow. Very disappointing to me. I graduated from this school. Graduation services were held in the auditorium. 
Uh, I graduated in 1948 with a class of 48 class members. We now meet yearly for uh, our uh, class reunions. My principal, all during that time, was uh, Mr. J.H. Bennett. His wife was also uh, taught my senior English class and uh, my senior civics class, government class. After I graduated from Montevallo, I came back to Fairhope, and Mr. Bennett uh, was going to hire me. My degree was in secondary education, but he told me that I would be teaching jun not junior high that I had applied for, but that I would be teaching uh, fifth grade. The reason for that was he said I looked the same age as the students and he wanted me in a lower grade. And from that time on, I stayed in a lower grade. Uh, I taught fifth grade here for a very long time. Aubrey McVeigh was one of my principals and George Merlini was one of my principals as well as Andy Shotgun. I later was recruited by Mr. Merlini to go to Daphne Middle School as their very first guidance counselor. Later, Mr. McVeigh approached me to go to Fairhope High School as senior counselor, which I did. Uh, I also uh, ended up the last six years of my school career of 31 years teaching not teaching, but being the county vocational counselor, and I retained that position for six years. The um, second year that I taught school here in Fairhope, Catherine Barrett was the sixth grade teacher at that time, and uh, Lawrence Stubberfield was the other sixth grade teacher. I thought it very interesting that my fourth grade teacher, Serena Beatty, was my co-fifth grade teacher, and I enjoyed working with her. Catherine and Lawrence and I decided that it would be interesting if we did some class changing, and uh, our principal was in agreement with it. so. I went into Mrs. Barrett's uh, sixth grade class and taught language arts, and she came in my class and taught art. I also went into Mr. Stubberfield's class and taught his class language arts, and he came into my class teaching science class. Mrs. Beatty came into my class and taught math to my class while I went into her classroom and taught language arts. This seemed to work for the children and for the teachers. Mrs. Barrett came into my classroom on Halloween to teach an art class and uh, we were having lessons and all of a sudden an owl flew in to the windowsill and perched there for the rest of the day. It fascinated the children because they were doing Halloween art. And of course, the day was totally disrupted by our visitor. And as it turned out, the entire elementary school filed through my room to actually see a real owl on Halloween that had come to visit us. When I left Fairhope, elementary school to go to Daphne Middle. Was very excited about the thought of a, of a new venture, but very sad to, because Fairhope High School has been my home. This, uh, I had many wonderful school experiences here. I remember in high school here, this particular lawn in front of this school would hold all of the population of Fairhope High School during break and lunch. And we had so much fun 
just being out here, sitting on the grass in groups, having uh, visits and telling jokes and, and what we were going to do on the weekend and after school. It, I left here with many fond memories uh, and I was homesick at times. It was always a pleasure to be asked to come back to this school for visits or lunches and to get to see everyone again. We started running on Green Old Road, which is Highway 98 now. I caught the bus started coming to Farrell from second grade. The second grade was on the south end of the school building. I walked all the way around my senior year here. Twelfth grade is one door down where we're at now. Coming to Farrell was like coming to daylight dark. Fort Pitt was a small family school. It was real nice. Everybody knew each other. I really hated to leave, but then when I got to Farrell, they was all the same way. We were a small class. Everybody was like brothers and sisters. We all just joined in, and we went all the way from there second grade through the 12th grade together. And uh, we always loved each other like brothers and sisters, and we're still doing that today. We still meet today. Most of our class meet every other month, and every five years we still meet. And very few classes does that. The highlights of school was coming to school, not having to work. I, I love school because of and we grew up, everything in Baltimore County was farming. You got off the bus, you started working, you worked the dark, and you get up in the morning, you go work before you come to school. So the reason I love school the most is I got out of work, I tell my dad, and he always wanted to whip me for it. He said, you're supposed to go to school to learn, boy. I said, well, I had more fun there, too, but it was a whole lot of fun in school, and it was working for you. So anyway, I was the first one of six boys to graduate from high school. All the rest of them had to drop out in ninth, 10th, 11th grade. My oldest brother dropped out in the 12th grade to go to World War II. So I was the first one to graduate out of the family, and it was hard back in those days because your mother and daddy both only had a first to sixth grade education. And my mother had a sixth grade education. My daddy had an eight. They knew right from wrong and how to raise you, and that's about it. So the class made my days in school good because we all worked together and studied together. I guess my highlights in school was uh, Sounded funny, we built a tennis court. We built the first tennis court at Farrell High School in 1948. It was a clay tennis court, and that'd give everybody at that time some recreation to do besides playing volleyball and horseshoe. And the, we had plenty of places to go for recreation if you had the money and the time to get there. Was the, down the casino was a meeting place for everybody, boys and girls, and the Barkells, the Skating ring was a popular place. So all through my high school, I had two popular places in Farrell, Farrell Casino and Burkell Skating Ring. Everybody really enjoyed that, and it was lots of fun being together. We had our back lark party at school at the Farrell Methodist Church, and the church was brand new, built in 1950, and we had the first back lark service in the Methodist Church. And we had our junior and senior prom, both at down at the casino upstairs in the dance room, which is no more than a day. And our class party was held at Gulf Shore. Back then, it was a ferry going down there, and we had to carry everything with us. And we went down there and spent the day and had a blast. And that was my last hooray of school with our song party with the senior class going down there. We really enjoyed it. Our teachers, we had some real good teachers back there. Then the, uh, all the teachers then would stay and help you and if you want to stay after school and study, they would do it. As we got older, I fell in love more with Miss Avery. She was probably my hardest teacher I had, but she was my favorite. Miss Lawson was a librarian, was a real good teacher. J.W. Lipscomb was an assistant football coach and an excellent teacher. And at that time, football wasn't always number one. If you wanted to stay in after school and study, J.W. Lipscomb would be in there with you. He said, I go practice after that. So he helped me a lot to have school. Miss Avery and Miss Lawson, besides my classmates, helped me make it through high school more than anybody else. But we had good teachers all the way up. Miss Garrett, all the way from grammar school up. Miss Beatty. I guess we were very fortunate to have good teachers then that had good respect. And you, you, my family all respected teachers because they were helping me, they thought. Because they couldn't help me. 
So education to me at Farrell Bar School was lots of fun, lots of pleasure, met lots of good folks and still proud to live in Fairhope. <laughs>